You're listening to The Startup with Monique LeRae, only on L.A. Talk Radio. How's it going, Los Angeles? This is The Startup with Monique LeRae. I'm Monique LeRae, coming to you live from actually Laguna Beach, California. And I'm so excited about this show. We have so many tremendous guests covering a, a wide array of topics and subjects in the space of entrepreneurship. And my first guest I'm going to bring out, but I want to just say, guys, uh, we are one week away, one week away from the Super Bowl, of course, but we're also one week away from our drag brunch at La Casa del Camino. If you don't have your ticket, get your tickets before they sell out. Um, it will be from 12 noon to 3, La Casa del Camino. You can go on Eventbrite and type in Drag Brunch, Matt Sarafa, Amber Crane. All right? We'd love to see you, Bottomless Mimosas, A Good Time, Music by DJ Halo, Brian Angel. So it's going to be a really good time. And if you aren't into football and you want to come hang out with some drag queens in Laguna, we would love to have you. So stay stand by for that. And we also, in, in, in literally one day, we'll be one month away from the Oscars Celebrity Gifting Suite. So... If you're interested in that, um, follow me on Instagram at Monique Lorray Stinson and or at, at Cap Aquarius Media or at the startup with Monique Lorray. And right down here is how you can spell my name right there. OK, without further ado, I have a very exciting guest since it will be Valentine's Day and literally, oh, my gosh, nine days. Edwina from Bettable. How you doing, Edwina? I'm doing well. Thank you. Wonderful to hear it. Thank you for making time. Why don't you um, introduce yourself and tell us what Bettable is all about? Okay, well, um, not to correct you, but it's Bed Bible. Oh, Bed Bible. Oh, bed Bible. <laughs> all, one, all one word. Okay. Um, uh, my name is Edwina, and I have been with Bed Bible since the since it started. It's uh, we've been going almost three years now, and Bed Bible was developed by two gentlemen. Um, by the name of Jacob and Benjamin. And um, they started out with sites just like ours in Denmark and Norway, Germany, Finland, and Sweden, and decided that it would be good to have one in the United States. And they got a hold of me and asked, since I had a lot of experience in the space as well as writing, um, if I could start the site with them. And I am so excited, Bed Bible has really grown. And um, basically what it is, is we are a website that, of course, we are affiliate. So we do sell sex toys from every imaginable brand that you could want. And prices ranging from $10 up to hundreds. So you can find that, lingerie, you name it. But what makes Bed Bible unique is that it is user-generated reviews. So we not only um, pull reviews from people from all over, we have our own dedicated testing panel and we have people from all ages, all races, all backgrounds, including people from all genders and the um, LGBTQIA plus everybody is including. So if you are wanting to say find a vibrator or um, say a um a strap on you will go to our site and you will probably find a review from somebody just like you wow wow what a, first of all congratulations on launching something um right before the pandemic right around the pandemic you know mm -hmm. internationally it sounds like you really um have found a niche and the smart reviewing that you do i think really probably helps you push the product in an organic way Yes. Yes. And well, people, um, a lot of people don't know where to start. Yeah. Um, if they want to, you know, add a little spice to their marriage or they want a little bit of, um, self care, let's put it that way. <laughs> um, a yeah. lot of people don't know where to start. What, what should my first toy be? And, yes. um, it's so easy to go to bed Bible and find your answers. We have a fantastic blog as well as just thousands upon thousands of reviews. Wonderful. And I love the name Bed Bible. I'm, I'm never going to forget it now. I'm doing the word association in my head now. <laughs> and what a great, great name. I'm glad you guys, um, you guys nailed that pun intended. But you know, it's fun to have <laughs> options right before Valentine's Day, you guys, mm -hmm. you know, some of us are just busy, you know, maybe yeah. you've given up on dating or you're 
the bumbles, I mean, some of these dating apps, shout out to everybody, but these dating apps, maybe it's not going your way. Who knows? But like you said, maybe you want to spice up a relationship or a marriage you're in. And it sounds like the price point is right for every budget. Yes. What, are, what are your top sellers? Um, could you tell us what people are looking for these days? Um, they're usually with um, couples, they are looking for um, something basic. Um, like a basic vibrator that they can use that's um, that doesn't actually look like a body part. Okay. Um, something that can be put in between two bodies. Okay. Um, something that can be used for massage and things like that. Okay. Um, also, our um, our vulva club, let's put it that way, are usually <laughs> the most popular items now are the um, pulse air stimulators. Some oh. people like to call them suckers, but they're actually pulses of air that feel like suction and it um, mimics oral sex. Wow. And we've so come, a <laughs> yes, we've have, come a long way. Yes, we have. I have been doing this for 30 years. I started my career doing in home parties, selling sex toys back before sex toys were mainstream. Um, people would get sex toys by going into triple X rated bookstores with their baseball caps pulled down. Yeah. And I started doing home party plans. And really? so I, I have watched everything go from hard plastic and cyber skin to beautiful, um, safe silicone toys that do a whole lot more than just vibrate. Wow. You've really probably contributed so much to the industry and thank you for helping people with their self-care and mm -hmm. relationship enhancement. <laughs> That's awesome. Yes. Um, so we were talking off air right before we came on and, you know, I was sharing um, for all the viewers and listeners that follow me. Um, everyone knows that I've been doing a few pandemic documentaries and showcasing highlighting entrepreneurs in this time and just, you know, providing a time capsule of who we are and how we've navigated this. You were sharing some an interesting statistic or so offline. We, why don't you share that with the viewers about uh, adult toys and during the pandemic? Yeah, during the pandemic, we saw an outrageous spike in the sale, sales of sex toys. Um, people were home, um, uh, single people were at home alone and a lot of people weren't hooking up. And so people turned to the next best thing and started doing a little bit of self-care. And even couples were getting into it. Um, I believe the industry just probably quadrupled. Wow. And it was it was insane. Even the sales of some of the most expensive items, which are um, sex dolls, which can be thousands of dollars. Um, it doubled. The sales of those doubled during the pandemic. This is really incredible to me. You know, I do try to make an effort to run by CES every year in Vegas. And I remember seeing mm -hmm. one of the dolls, um, maybe it was like two years ago or about a year and a half. Anyway, I saw a doll stand and, and they are get, becoming more and more lifelike and they're in yeah. demand, right? They're, they're absolutely amazing, especially the robotic ones now. They have AI dolls. Oh my God. that actually can learn your name okay. and they can carry on a, an intelligent conversation with you. Now they have not made a male doll yet. He right. is, they're still working on it. Um, you can still get the regular male dolls, but they don't have the AI dolls yet, but they are okay. just absolutely amazing. The things that they can do now. Um, if you don't have a partner, I mean, a lot of people are lonely and yeah, it's, I, like I said, I will never, ever yuck anybody's yum. If that's your thing, then <laughs> I love then that. Awesome. Eliza Edwina, I will never yuck anybody's yum. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's great. That's wonderful. Did You've got to yeah. trade with that. Um, so, yeah, you know, I'm, I'm laughing because we, in a good way, I think, I think there, uh -huh. we should have balance, you know, and everybody's, like you said, everybody's yum doesn't have to be the same. So wow. where, where can people follow you and support you and, order maybe they want to send a gift or you know uh do something nice for valentine's day where can people find you um bedbible.com it's all one word and like i said we have dozens of affiliates so we you can find everything from um penis rings to sex dolls lingerie um all types of gifty type things and um some of our affiliates especially love honey 
Um, nice. They sell a lot of great Valentine's things this time of year. She Vibe is another site. She Vibe. That's a nice so, name. So like you that. can access all of these through us. It doesn't cost you anything extra. We just get a little bit of kickback. Okay. Um, and that, that helps us to be able to, you know, continue to, to get people on our site, to give reviews and everything. So you'll be able to find everything at bedbible.com. You can find us on Twitter at bedbible. We are also on Facebook at bedbible. Um, Instagram as well. We have a YouTube channel, which you will see me exactly where I am right now, which is in my bed. <laughs> Um, and good that's brand where, placement, good smart brand placement. <laughs> and ge generally, I'm in pajamas, and that's where I do my reviews. Um, oh. I I pride myself on being um, that midway. I'm not going to sit there and let my cleavage hang out and do disgusting things. Um, I'm I, I'm halfway between that and being a grandmother. So okay, I, I try to to make yeah. everybody feel comfortable. So yeah. you can find us there. And we also have In Bed with Bed Bible, our podcast. So you can find that on your favorite prov provider. I love it. I, I love that you're doing that. And it's a positive message to take care of yourself in all areas. We're talking about mental health, sexual health, you know, spiritual, health, just everything. And as an entrepreneur, you got to, we can't be pent up, guys. We're, we're in the endemic phase of this thing. And we really have mm -hmm. to just... I think that's great. I'm going to change Valentine's Day just to be a self-care day, no matter if you're with someone yes. or not. Right? And remember, orgasms are good for your body. They not oh. only help you sleep, but they um, improve a lot of your body functions. They make you happy, and it boosts your immune system, lowers your incidence, your um, chances of getting heart disease. Oh. And for men, it lowers your chances of prostate cancer. So orgasms are good. So orgasms are good. The big yes. O. <laughs> yes, I love absolutely. it. Absolutely. The big. So Edwin, quick question though. So you you up your uptick in the in the business you said was about three times, which is, I mean, that's an amazing way to grow a you know a brand and all the brands that you're if in a, you know in bed with again. <laughs> but you know, <laughs> the supply chain. How did that affect you during the pandemic and getting the products to people, or were you guys not affected by that? We were affected only a small amount. Um, the, the only problem was is that things were selling out. And um, like Love Honey, Love Honey has, um, it's one of the largest sex toys di distributors in the United States and um, in the UK, I believe is where they started. Um, don't quote me on that. Okay. But um, between their massive warehouses, they had no problems fulfilling orders. Like I said, they would temporarily sell out of things, but they would quickly get them back in. So I didn't really see um, much of a problem at all. Okay. And the batteries too, you know, cause we're thinking like the key ignition problem for the cars, I'm thinking batteries, but I don't think the batteries were an issue either, which is good. Right. And some of these that you can plug in as USB, right? Yes. USB. Um, I would say probably a good 90% of sex toys now are, um, USB charging. Great. So everything is rechargeable and um, they they last a lot longer than the old school toys used to. Yeah. <laughs> Wonderful. Well, this has been amazing. And oh, do you guys have bedroom candy? Bedroom candy? From um, Candy Burris from Escape? Um, I don't know. We would have to check my, our um, partners and see if they carry it. I'm sure one of our incredible partners would carry it for sure. Yeah, it's spelled with the K because her name is spelled with the K. But um, she's on the Real Housewives of Atlanta, Candy okay. Burris. Yeah, it's an, like an MLM, I think. But shout out to Candy Burris and Bedroom Candy because I thought that was a cute name and play on words for her name. So. Oh yeah, I love it. I love it too. Really? I love it too. Well, you're gonna have to come back, Edwina. I feel like we're gonna need to see you more than once. Okay. <laughs> Not we need a to problem. Check in on what's working for folks and. Oh, last question. What is the top three? Give me the top three areas would you say saw a spike in sales from your from your knowledge uh, during the pandemic, would you say? Um, they would be um, what we would call vulva, vulva toys okay. um, for um, people with vulvas. And that would be, like I said, the pulse air stimulators, um, vibrators like the jackrabbit. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah I meant like location-wise, cities or areas. Oh, 
Oh my gosh. Smash. It was all over. It was all everywhere, over. Everywhere. Everywhere. Actually, if you go to our site, scroll to the bottom, we yeah. have a link called statistics. Okay. And it will tell you um, state by state, city by city, who's buying what, who's using what, where yeah. they hide them. We have all kinds of really great statistical pieces that um, Jacob and Benjamin have put together. I mean, they're very involved in the day-to-day -day activities, but putting together these statistics, we have some really great ones that might make you go, oh, really? Okay. I love this. Guys, not only do we get amazing gift ideas for Valentine's Day, we've got Edwina giving us all the fun facts. Check <laughs> out bedbible.com. Thank you so much. Um, and we've got, let's check in again with you towards the summer. Maybe we've got some summer toys for people or an oh, update. Yeah. Water toys. Ooh. Water toys are always fun. Got to have those waterproof toys. What? Oh my gosh. Okay. I've got to get on. I've been slacking on this area. <laughs> Thank you, Edwina. You guys check out bedbible.com. Thank you for being on. We'll see you soon. Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure. <laughs> uh, my pleasure too. Bye-bye. Bye, Edwina. All right, you guys, that's bedbible.com. So if you are looking to get some something fun for Valentine's Day for yourself or for someone that you care about, there you go. All right. My next guest, author. Hello, is Drago there? Monique, hey, how are you doing? Hey, how's it going, Drago? We finally made it happen. <laughs> we did. I, I hope everything's okay after the blackouts and, you know, the unexpected uh, California shenanigans. That was crazy. Yes, we. and you know what's interesting? I don't think it really rained at all, not what it would match up for that to happen. So obviously it must have been a block thing. I checked down the street. Guys, if you, you didn't you see us last week, we were trying to get on, but we were having a rolling blackout here in Laguna, but only certain streets. But We've got Drago here, and I hope I pronounced it correctly this time. Yeah, fantastic. Okay, so why don't you introduce yourself and your book and tell us what you've got going on? Absolutely. Um, you know, I'm connecting it to your last segment. Uh, not <laughs> quite the Valentine's Day present, but, you know, if, if, uh, if your partner is really into business and understanding how things work, then, uh, you know, might, might be nice and, and loving. Yeah, um, a little balance. <laughs> yeah, a, little, a little balance. you got to live a balanced life. Um, yeah, let me tell you the inspiration for how this book came about, and then we can perhaps see how to make it, yes, relevant for your viewers. So um, okay. I, I worked in Wall Street for about five years prior to moving to Chicago, where I just got my MBA. Congratulations. And thank you very much. Yes. And uh, my role, in, I was an analyst. I had to analyze different companies. And I had uh, my team with the portfolio manager and we basically have like a pool of cash and I have to find investments in companies, you know, that are worthy of, of the portfolio managers, you know, pool of cash. And so we would have access to these different deals, these big, like multi-million, multi-billion dollar companies. And so I would go like meet with the CEOs, they would do a presentation and, um, and then I'd ask questions like on the earnings calls. And so trying to you know, create a story that I'm going to pitch for my portfolio manager while also listening to the story that the company pitches to the investors. So I kind of have to bridge the gap, you know, view certain things skeptically and see if it's the right fit. And so um, there really wasn't any structure or guidebook uh, for navigating that process of, of understanding if a company is good or not and um, and, and how to translate that message. So basically, I, I created what I wish I had access to the first few years on the job. Wonderful. And you guys, if you missed that title, it's called What Does This Company Do? And I love the title, Understanding a Business and Its Risks. So you know what you, you know, you remind me of, um, take, I hope you take this as a compliment because I've, sure. I've done it for many years, but you remind me of a reality TV producer, honestly, because we'd get this sheet of paper. And it would be the breakdown of the show concept that they've pitched to the network. And I have to go out into the world, literally, into random places and talk to strangers and get them to sign on the dotted line and to be put on camera and talk them into coming to L.A. to try out for the show. Then yeah. I'd have to talk the network and the producers and the production company into liking that person. So I was a middle person, but I had to sell both parties. And it sounds like you've really streamlined some things here. Why don't we go over some stuff that could help people who are coming out of the startup space that might need some of your services? 
Yeah, absolutely. So um, you could either approach it from if you're in, investing like in, as an angel, because some people like to invest and help other startups grow. Oh. Did oh, Monique, are we there? Uh, yeah, okay. <laughs> Oh, right. I was going to say, if you're an angel investing in, in other companies, or if you're a company that you want to raise money from other people, or you just want to be able to explain your story in a compelling way that gets your customers excited, gets other people that are involved excited, this will also have some value for you. Um, so before going into any specifics, the, the big picture of how this book is structured is I use what's called spectrum thinking. Okay. So the idea being where if you say, oh, is this company good or, or not? Well, you can't answer that question unless you have a comparison, like compared to what? Compared to what kind of business, what kind of companies? And so then I give 30 spectrums so then you can see where your company fits on that continuum, almost like a personality test, right? Where you know where, where you are on the, on the spectrums of those. So that's the structure of it. And then happy to go into anything specific, but... I love this because you act kind of like um, for both parties. It seems like you also act like a, well, obviously you're, you're acting as a consultant in many, many regards, but then you're also an analyst as well as locating angels. <laughs> I mean, right. I mean, do you outsource um, for any startups out there that are looking for angels or is that a part of your services as well? Sure. So I so right now, post business school, I do some venture capital investing myself. Right. And, uh, and then I also have a startup of my own, a software. So I do some of the software development for that. So it's been a, a bit of a pivot. I still use the principles in this book, uh, you know, but, you know, I, I migrated away from the pure Wall Street, you know, type of role you might imagine to something that's a little more mixed now, yes. nowadays. Nice. A hybrid model. I like it, which is the way to go, right? I mean. Well, with the pandemic, it opened up a lot of opportunities to mix and match a little bit. So, yeah. Yeah. OK, so talk to us. Um, talk to us about let's say that you're a startup business, but you're going to scale probably to maybe, um, you know, a, you're getting out of that startup phase and you're starting to see a little cash come back and you're able to pay yourself a salary now or, you know, have a little extra change to maybe reinvest. Um, what? Give us some tips, maybe, or without giving away all your secret sauce. Um, what would you do with a company that was looking to put some money away? Where would you probably guide them? I know that the um, crypto world is a crazy fun space. I know the metal world's a crazy fun space, and all of those things are still going to be around, and it's up and down. But how could someone navigate that landscape if they're just coming into a little bit of uh, return? Yeah, uh, that's a great question, Monique. So, yeah, let's zoom out a second from this, you know, company analysis stuff. And I, I think the question you're proposing is holistically just life management. You know, how, how do I manage the future that I'm planning for and then where I'm at today? And so, but you know, you, you it's almost like a personal finance question. So yeah. you want to have a sense of what are my objectives? What kind of quality of life do I want? And then how stable do I want, how guaranteed do I want that? Um, and, and then how much time do I have to get that goal? If I'm comfortable hitting my goal in 15, 20 years, I can take a lot of risk today that could make, help me get to a higher level. But you know, if I need to hit this goal five years from now, then I might not want to take as much risk because um, you know, if, if the markets turn, I don't have enough time to, to make that up. So mm -hmm. you always want to look at things holistically. So um, what, what are my assets? People make the mistake of, it's called mental accounting bias, where we put things in different buckets rather than looking at the whole pool of where's my money allocated. So um, look at, you know, real estate, how much equity do I have in a house? If, if you are a homeowner, um, look at your savings account, you know, lower risk, look at stock market and then look at like real estate or specific. So when you say crypto, for example, that would be, you know, high risk allocation. Um, yeah. Perhaps if you want to play with that, maybe five to 10 percent, you know, and even some would say that's a lot. Uh, <laughs> you can allocate to crypto. Definitely, you know, wouldn't allocate 90 percent unless I mean, look, if you're a young person and you don't care that you can lose it all and you want to, you know, go swing for the fences. Yeah, it's fine. You can do that knowing that you have time to rebuild if things turn sour. But the, the first question is assess the level of risk you're comfortable with, and then yeah. your aspirations for what kind of quality of life you want. 
I love it. And it sounds like you're the perfect person for my startup brands to call when they start getting a little coin, a little return, and they can assess that. So how can people find you? Are you available? I mean, you might be busy, Drago. I, you know, I don't know what your schedule looks like. Yeah, no. Uh, <laughs> my my website, uh, drago.life, that would be the best way to get a, get a hold of me. Um, yeah, and then happy. I mean, look, if someone reaches out to you, Monique, please feel free to uh, you know pass them along as well because we're connected. Yes. Um, yeah, and and I'd say, look, specifically, I mean, if you're an entrepreneur, of course, you're comfortable with more risk compared to the other person who's doing the nine to five. They just want the steady thing. Like you want to see if you can make something big for yourself, and that's great. And so um, that means you're comfortable with ambiguity, and the type of decisions you know you make are going to be a little different than. The person who's not having that entrepreneurial spirit like you. Wow, really, really great point. Great that you highlighted that. And I think it's important to kind of, and I said this when I first started the podcast, when you're an entrepreneur, it's okay to say out loud that you're a little different and you're, you're cut from a different cloth and you're going to probably approach things a little different. And it's okay to do that. You know, I mean, it's true to your nature. <laughs> Yeah. I mean, look, some people are comfortable if each day is predictable and there's no surprises. That's yeah. fine. But, you know, if you're an entrepreneur, that, that, you, that's the opposite. You get, you know, I, you don't want to be stuck in the box. I need something different. Uh, so it's a, oh, a different way of being. Yeah. And, and by the way, if you don't mind, I hope breaking the news that you're going to be coming to the West Side soon. Is, is that news we can break here? Oh, or? yeah, sure. Yeah, we'll be, uh, my wife and I move into San Diego. So we, we have some roots there anyway. Um, nice. So it, it's perfect timing now because Chicago is not that hospitable with its weather. I, I'm saying you. You've, uh, hopefully you're you're keeping as warm as possible. And yes, we can't wait to have you on the West Side. I want to talk to you offline. I think you'd be great for our Oscars event um, on March 6th. I don't know if I, I mentioned that to you, but you guys, if you want to pick this up, what does this company do? Drago Dimitrioff, did I say it right? Yes. Okay. Is it Russian or Ukrainian or well, uh, Bulgarian? You know, so Bulgarian. It's, Eastern European, it's in the yeah, area. Yeah. yeah exactly. I was just in Romania for my film um, on the pandemic. I was there in November. Oh, nice. So very close to, to your hood, your old well, hood. <laughs> you know, I, re yeah, I recommend um, food wise, cause you could find it, you know, in, in like your local town, let's say uh, look for Borek, Burek or Banitsa, um, and every one of these countries had Bulgaria, Romania, I mean, even Israel, uh, Uzbekistan, Croatia, side point, uh, but it's cheese and phyllo, and it'll get you through those ups and downs of entrepreneurship. Oh, you know what? I think I did have some of that. It, yeah. Yes, I think I did have some of that in passing, and you're right. You know, it's it's a, it'll it'll fill you up for less. Yeah, <laughs> That's yeah really good. exactly. Loved it. Well, so you're coming back. We've definitely have to have you back on. I'd love to have you back around uh, tax season, even though I know it's pre it's tax season now, but maybe in April, um, I'll be on the road again for the film, the last part of our documentary. Um, I will be hitting uh, Sydney, Auck Auckland, uh, somewhere in M Malaysia, and then um, uh, Vietnam. Okay. So, Wow. So we well, might be course, coming yeah. to you live from one of those countries and around that time. So I'll be out of the country, but let's connect yeah. again. Let's let's do it, Monique. That'd be great. All right, you guys. This is Drago Dimitriev with What Does This Company Do? If you need any kind of consulting in this space, understanding the risks of business and how to move your money and how, where to go next, I think he's the perfect person for you. Give us your website one more time. Yes, just uh, www.drago.life. It's no dot com oh, life. And um, yeah, and I'll say, you know, in this book, I just want to say one more thing. The concept of spectrum thinking itself is a mental tool. So even outside of business, it can, you know, come into play, uh, whether you're having difficult conversations in politics or whatever it is. It, it's a way that I found is super helpful to organize and compare things. I like the spectrum thinking idea and you're right. I think you can assert some emotional intelligence for some of those conversations on yes. the spectrum. Yeah. I've, I've done that now. I've put some boundaries on what I'll engage in and um, you know, where I'll put my energy. So that's exactly. good. Well, congratulations on the MBA. Hopefully by this time or next year, I'll be right around uh, graduation for mine. I just got accepted to Pepperdine. So. Oh, wow. Program. Congratulations. Fantastic. Thank you. Thank you. All right, you guys. What does this company do? Drago, thank you for making time and I'll talk to you soon. Yeah, thanks for having me, Monique.
All right. Stay warm in Chicago. See you on the West side. See you later. <laughs> All right. All right, you guys. Again, this book is awesome. What does this company do? Drago Dimitriev, CFA, Understanding Business and Risks. I think that um, he is got a really great handle on on how to, to handle this pun intended so that spectrum thinking and where you can shift your you know your thoughts on business and how to compare which one might work for you what models um, where to invest your income um, smart love it all right let's see who do we have next we've got Lisa is Lisa here <laughs> Hello, Lisa. Hello. How are you? I'm good. How are you, darling? I love your background. Thanks. Just sitting in my office today. So okay, getting your week started early with the startup. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. All right, you guys. Well, listen. I met Lisa at the Black Wealth. Uh, I keep saying Expo, but that's not it. It's the Black Wealth. Summit. Um, Summit. It's the word right, Monique. And then we're in Maryland, and we had a good time, and. Why don't you introduce yourself and tell people what you do? Yeah, absolutely. So my name is Lisa Schulteis, and I actually own two companies. One is Electroline Marketing, where we do event planning, management, and production. And then the second one is Your Event Marketplace, which is a global online marketplace directory for the events industry. Mm-hmm. And then, of course, in my spare time, um, I'm also the uh, executive director for the Northwest Event Show in Seattle, which is coming up in about 40 days in March. Yes. Um, and then I also speak. So, you know, I, I just sit on the couch and eat bonbons a lot. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> well, listen, I just discovered those dots pretzels. Holy smokes. I don't oh, know yes. if the lady puts in <laughs> pretzels. It's criminal in a good way. Okay. So I'm right there with you on the couch. But no, you seem like you definitely keep yourself busy with wonderful things. Let's delve into your brands. Tell us a little bit more about these event space directories and who that helps. Yeah, so that one, uh, we launched that about a year and a half ago. So that one is still in startup mode. Um, But, you know, as we know, with COVID and the pandemic, um, the events industry just got hit really, really hard. Yeah. And we actually did really well. Uh, we were already producing virtual before the pandemic. So we just got busier. Um, but we had a lot of people calling us asking if we were hiring. AV companies were you know, laying people off because they just didn't have business. And so about a year and a half ago, I launched it um, with a dual intent. One, to allow all of these companies that are, you know, anything related to events industry, right? So AV production, venues, DJs, you name it, um, that they would be able to have a place to come and showcase what they do and who they are. And then on the other side of that, to give event planners and event coordinators kind of a one-stop shop where they could come and find their venue and find their experiences and find their, you know, caterers and and transportation and everything else. So um, it has a dual market, but it's it's definitely one of the passion projects that I've been working on um, just because I really wanted to give back to this industry that I love so much. Oh, wow. So what did you know that you like to do this, you know, events and I mean obviously you like you like people and you like connecting the dots but what did you find this out about yourself you know it's funny we we always the Electrolime is the the oldest company it's 13 and a half years and it really started as a, a digital marketing agency but we always used events as part of our marketing plan for our clients we worked with a lot of speakers a lot of authors influencers and we always used events as part of that marketing. And I loved that that piece of it. I, I, I tell people all the time, I'm like, you have to be a little bit of a special kind of crazy to love events, right? Because <laughs> it's just, you know, yeah. I mean, you know, you just finished up your, your event up at Sundance. I mean, <sighs> it's it's a lot of work. Oh, um, it's it's a bubble of, of time that's insanity time, right? There's, there's 50,000 things that you're juggling at the same time. Oh, um, but I loved it. Yes. And so about four years ago, I, you know, freaked out my, my husband and said, I'm firing most of my clients <laughs> and decided to just transition it from kind of that broad digital marketing agency to more of a, we're going to do events, but we're still doing them with a marketing goal, right? Okay. We still yeah. want this to be part of your marketing plan. So let's talk about why you're doing the events and then let's go ahead and plan that so that we can measure an ROI for you. 
Wow. I like that the ROI is built into, I mean, the thought and, and the, and the conversation, I think a lot of startups and, you know, I've, I've said this before, you have to really have a come to Jesus about accepting money when you're a startup and being able to accept it and know your worth and say the price out loud and say that you are worth having, you know, an energy exchange in the form of money for your idea. So I love that you are consciously built, you've built that in to the conversation because a lot of people are shy about that, you know, like, oh, I don't know what to charge or. Right. Yeah. Well, and you have to know what your goal is, right? Like, why are you having the event in the first place? Are you doing it for brand awareness? Mm -hmm. Are you doing it for a product launch? Are you doing it um, to, you know, maybe move somebody into another package that you're working on? You know, if you are in the coaching space, yeah. um, there's a lot of different reasons why to have an event, but you have to know why you're doing it. And then you have to know what it is that makes that successful. Is it sales? Is it awareness? What is it? Yeah. Um, so you have to have that kind of, you know, let's look at the finish line perspective yeah. um, and then build backwards from that. I love it. So tell us more about this event that you got going in March in Seattle, one yeah. of my favorite cities. Absolutely. So this is the Northwest Event Show. Um, it is in downtown Seattle. It's at the brand new convention center. So there is the Seattle Convention Center has the Arches Building, which they've had for years. They just opened the summit in January. It is stunning and beautiful in six floors of just amazing building um, that they're winning all kinds of awards for. But the event itself is actually geared for people in the event space, event planners, coordinators. Um, there's a lot of executive assistants out in the world who are event planners. They just don't necessarily know it, right? They're planning everything for the bosses, right? Um, so it's really a place for anybody who is in the events industry to come and attend and to meet other people who can help support their events. So we have, you know, vendors coming in, we have two full days of education. Um, so we're running everything from the business of events, you know, looking at an event from the perspective of a CEO or a CMO or a CFO um, to the future of events. What are we looking at with sustainability? What are we looking at with community? And then obviously experience, right? Events always have experience. So it doesn't matter if you're doing a four hour workshop online or if you're running a 15,000 person conference, um, it's just a great place for everybody to come and connect and really talk about where we need to keep going in, in the event space. Love it. I think I can see so many uses for this. Um, how many people are you expecting? How many tickets are available? Um, there are, we, we can sell a lot, the, the building holds a lot of people. Um, we're expecting probably between about one and 2000 people. Wow. Um, and we have a lot of vendors coming in. We already have, I think, 150 committed. Um, so we are just, we're going, 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 um, you know, in the event world, as we know, the last kind of, we're down to about five weeks now. So yeah. those those last five weeks is when all the ticket sales come in and all the final vendors come in. And um, but it should be fun. We have some great experiences happening in there. We have, like I said, we've got all kinds of great education. Um, so it's it's going to be a lot of fun. Make sure you give me the link, Lisa, if you can email it to me. I want to make sure I repost it. Guys, get yeah, into this, with Lisa, and um, give us the website. Where can people find you one more time? Yeah, so they can find me at electrolime.com. So that's lime like the fruit. So E-L-E-C-T-R-A-L-I-M-E.com. Um, or my virtual event.pro is probably the easiest one as well. I love it. Well, it's good to see you. And it's good to see you. Well, thank you. And it's good to be seen. <laughs> and um, I know. Next soon. Um, I don't know if I talked to you about the Oscars event. I'm telling everyone today because it's literally in a month. I don't expect like, invited to. So I know. So I was I, actually promoting that Oscars event for you a couple weeks ago. So thank I'll, you. I'll with you on that. Okay, let's let's see what we can do. Okay, <laughs> and however I can help uh, for the March event, let me know what what I can do. But I do want to post the link, so we'll get that info Perfect. out. All right, okay. you guys. Well, thank you for being here, Lisa. We'll have to have you again, and you'll have to give us an update on your next stuff, on your next event. <laughs> thank you. I appreciate it. It was great being here. All right. Good to see you. All right, guys. So what else? I had, before we bring on our last, um, 
our last guest. God, I just had a brain freeze. I have something else to, to tell you. Um, all right. Well, I don't remember, but if you guys aren't following me on YouTube, go ahead and check out uh, Latchkey Kid Films by Monique Loray Stinson. Give us a like on there. We've got some new content. Oh, very soon I'm about to drop the trailer for the pandemic film. I know I've been saying I was going to do it. It's been busy. It's been busy, but I want to do it right. My editor and I are putting our final touches on it. I looked at some of the footage. It looks really good. And uh, I'm excited to to get that going. So just hang tight with me. I'm going to probably drop it here in the next two weeks. So you'll see the international trailer, which is the pandemic film. But if you haven't seen the American award-winning, nine-time nominated and awarded uh, American trailer, the pandemic project documentary, you can find that on YouTube. Just type in the four words, the pandemic project documentary in YouTube and you'll find it and you'll find my channel too. And you'll find all these shows there because we upload uh, there as well. If you're not following us on, on Facebook, on the LA talk radios page, give Sh Sam a shout out. He owns and runs the show. Thanks Sam for everything you do. All right, let's get to our, I think we have one more guest, Sam. Is Emily here? Emily, how's it going? Hi, I love your glasses, by the way. Oh, thank you. I'm getting so many compliments on these. These were a gift. So thank you. Shout out to oh, Lena. Thanks, Lena. <laughs> All right. Well, you look very refreshed and smiley. Why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself and tell everybody who you are? Yeah. So I'm Emily Lynn Paulson and I'm a writer and a speaker. And I run a uh, online digital platform for sober moms. Wow. Uh, yeah. So that's my, and I have five kids. So, you know, in my very vast spare time, those are, those are all the things that I do. <laughs> what? Okay. Well, listen, those two things, I didn't know those two things could go together being sober <laughs> and being a mother of five kids. Wow. No wonder your skin looks so great. Well, congratulations <laughs> on your sobriety and well, your five you. children. Tell us how this, this brand launched. I mean, obviously from life experience, but could you tell us a little bit more? Yeah, so um, Sober Mom Squad came out of the pandemic. Um, I was working as a recovery coach, and um, there were just a lot of women who were in need of services that couldn't access them. And so I started a platform uh, to really help reach out in a time when women really needed it. And it's for sober moms, uh, sober curious, um, you know, any been sober for years. So really anyone who's a mom and uh, looking to get or stay sober. Yeah. And then wow. I uh, also through the pandemic, um, I wrote a book. Um, and uh, yeah, so that's why don't you have it? Do you have it there? Do you I do, hold it yes. up? Yeah. Hey, yes. hon. I know that my copy's coming in the mail, so I can't wait because I've got a couple long flights. Right. And I love that title. So I'll be. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Congratulations on your cover. I really hold it up again, Emily. I like that. Yeah. Yes. Hey, hon. It's got lipstick on there and it's kind of got the, tell us about the cover, the creativity behind it. Yeah. So what I was doing before I became a recovery coach um, was I was working for a multi-level marketing company. And through the pandemic, I started realizing there were some problematic things that I wasn't loving. And I started researching a little bit more about it. Um, decided it was something I didn't want to be a part of anymore. And I decided to write about my experience. And so that's what this book is all about is how I got in, um, what I saw while I was in, how I kind of started to see the light and all of the research I've done around why I didn't want to be involved anymore. Yeah. It's interesting. The MLM space and I saw the pyramid and that can be, um, you know, translated in many different ways. So people could think that that's another thing, but yeah. I, I recognized it right away. And with, you know, I don't know if you know this, I have a startup called um, Silicon Beach Coffee Company mm -hmm. that has been a start and a stop for many years. And I just, you know, I had to push it off the plate during the pandemic and focus on the documentaries on the pandemic that I've been doing. And I call it the anti MLM. It's the MLM without an MLM, if that makes yeah. sense. <laughs> I take the MLM out of the MLM and make it a positive thing. So yeah. I was being, you know, having some wordplay with that. But I'm glad that you found what worked for you. And what a dynamic time to become sober, to launch a brand, to be a, continue to be a mom to five kids and, and still, like, not murder anyone. I mean, I'm just... I'm, I know. <laughs> How did you do that? Can you tell us how you do that? Because I don't even have one kid. I got a plan. 
Yeah. Well, honestly, I mean, I, I really owe a lot of it to my recovery and, you know, this, this sober mom squad wouldn't have been formed. This book wouldn't have been written. It really opened my eyes to a lot of uh, things and allowed me to be present for a lot more things. So, yeah. Yeah. So I like the word term that I just learned from you, sober conscious. Perhaps it's kind of related to a term I use, which is the temporary vegetarian, yep. which is my, you know, my term because I, you know, I'm doing it temporarily, but it's been five years now. So tell us more about so being sober conscious. Yeah. So I think there's a big shift lately. It used to be very black and white. Like you either drank or you didn't. And if you didn't, it's because you had a problem, right? And now people are starting to understand that, you know, alcohol, hey, it's legal. Adults can use it if they want to, no judgment, but you know, it does lead to some health effects and it does lead to anxiety and it does all of these things. And so if you are concerned about those things, hey, let's look at maybe just this informed consent piece of letting people know that, you know what, if you can reduce your use, cut back a little bit or stop altogether, these benefits can come from it. And I think we've seen there's this huge rise in the market of um, non-alcoholic wine, non-alcoholic alcoholic beers, mm -hmm. all these, you know, mocktails, yeah. restaurants are catering to sober people. So the, the stigma of it being an all or nothing thing has really mm -hmm. gone away. And mm -hmm. the biggest thing is that any harm reduction is good. So, you know, if you cut back a little bit, swap out a beer here and there for a non-alcoholic beer, like it's a very positive thing. Love that you're countering the whole stay in the pajamas, order Amazon and take out Uber Eats and drink all day and work from home during the pandemic because God only knows that's, but I was in an airplane, airport lounge the whole time. So I was yeah. doing that too, you know, and I like that you're balancing out that narrative. Um, you know, is there a space where, I'm a self-professed wino, I have the wine caterers, it's, it's one of my passions and I've been doing that for a long time, but there are phases where, I don't want a drink at all. I just want to chill. I, I want sparkling water. I, I'm, I'm cool. I have my coffee. Yeah. I'm cool. So is th is this a safe space for the moms to have those conversations? Because I feel like some people either think you're an alcoholic or you're not. And like you said, black or yeah. white. But there's people that are kind of, as Drago, my other guests were talking about, there's spectrum thinking that can happen here, right? Yeah. Absolutely. There's a huge gray area. And I think so much of it is asking yourself, okay, like, why am I pouring this glass of wine? And if it's, oh, it tastes really good with my steak, that's a whole different answer than I'm going to, you know, murder my kids if I don't drink okay. this, right? That's a whole you different thing. You don't want so that. Whether, yeah. So, you know, using a substance to cope versus using something because it's enjoyable to you for some reason. I think, so there's a, there's a whole different aspect. And I think just being more conscious of it. Mm. And, you know, what I talk to moms about a lot is, you know, how are we talking to our kids about it? And the more honest you are about your own use, the more honest you can be with your kids. And then they'll grow up with a better sense of that just informed consent that, Hey, this is something that I can do when I'm an adult, but you know, it has these risks and, I'm going to make that decision, right? I love it. I love it. I would like, I'm going to tell everybody today, and I need to talk to your publicist, but I would really love to get your book, your bookmarkers or something in to our Oscars event, our gifting suite, our celebrity oh, that'd event. Be awesome. Yeah. That's going to be, a, it's, it's a month from tomorrow. I, I got to get them from Jeez. you. So um, drop down in the, in the chat real quick. Give me your info or we'll go through your publicist, but I just need to reach you today and I'll, I'll CC you and her. So she has it. Okay, perfect. Um, but I think this is a very good thing, especially because in Hollywood, like, are you kidding? Like we need that balance. We, I also, on behalf of someone born in Hollywood and works in the business and we have wine and cocktails at everything we do, every function we do. Right. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Giving mom's courage. What if, have you found that your brand has saved anybody that you know of? I mean, we hear testimonials all the time about, I just felt so alone. And then I found all these people via Zoom that were going through the same thing I was. Yeah. So that feeling of isolation that came from the pandemic and just comes sometime from being a mom in general, really, that, that's the biggest key is the community aspect of it. I love it. The community is where it's at. You guys hold up that book for me one more time. It's called Pay Hun. And... Oh my gosh, Emily, congratulations on everything. And we need to talk about the film as well. Um, being a mom to five kids and being sober in a pandemic. That's another thing we got. We got a lot to talk about, sister. Okay. <laughs> Keep up the fantastic support and work. And we'll, we're going to see you next time. Sounds good. Thanks, Monique. Thanks for, thanks for being here. You guys, check it out. 
what we start up today. I will see you next weekend from the drag brunch and have a good weekend. Bye. You're listening to The Startup with Monique LeRae only on LA Talk Radio.